So you can imagine, sort of, I was diagnosed, what, 30 years ago, October 82, which is um, quite something. So, you know, for you, you're newly diagnosed. How did you find that? I just did it a gay pride. I thought, oh, I haven't had a test in about nine, ten months. Yeah. Called me back about six days later. Oh, you've, uh, there's something wrong with your test. They told me it was inconclusive. Mm. I had two more tests, the rapid finger tests. Right. Uh, they come back inconclusive, little red lines supposed to appear, a bit like a pregnancy test, um, <laughs> if, it's, if it's reactive. And I, I was just looking at this test on the desk and it was just a very faint little red smidge, the uh, nurse said, we can't say you're negative looking at that. So did they then do a sort of full blood test? Full blood, blood test, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tuesday afterwards on the 11th I was uh, diagnosed properly. Because I went home in a state. Of course. And I thought, right, I'm going to... I'm going to learn about this. They told me not to. I said, do not go on the internet. You will convince yourself you're near death if you go on the internet. And then you realise after about two days and no sleep on your laptop, you think, OK, this is OK. Back in my day, um, it was terrifying. Yeah. It, was, it was basically, you know, a, a terminal diagnosis. I always used to think that this is what people must have felt like sort of in the trenches in sort of World War I, you know people were just dying and it was horrendous the decimation it was it was very it was lonely it was very sort of you know it was very frightening I got to December of that year and I tried to commit suicide and I couldn't I couldn't bear the thought of someone actually having to come and clear up the mess <laughs> afterwards so I thought if you can't do it then you better get out and and live mm. and I was sort of you know scanning the gay press and I happened to see that there was this bus leaving for a demonstration from Gaze the Word, from, uh, from where we are here. So I screwed up my courage and sort of uh, came down here and joined the bus, and it was incredible. And like, sort of, you know, from then on, my life just, uh, just completely turned round. When I was diagnosed, my first question was, oh, how long have I got left? And it was really shocking to find out, oh, no, you'll be fine. It was very relaxed. And how did your parents take it? Um, my mother when I told her I had to leave work crying. My mum told me afterwards that the last thing she remembers of HIV or AIDS was when she worked um, in a hospital in 1990 and there was an IV drug user um, who, was, who had AIDS and was deteriorating and she said she wore three, three pairs of gloves and she was terrified and she said that, she said she, I felt guilty about that forever. So she burst out crying and told me that. She says, I can't believe my son is now HIV positive. I never would have thought. And it was just horrible to tell people. I think that was the worst thing. When I but was, you did. I did t straight away. Uh, I felt a lot of comfort mm. in disclosing my status. I can so imagine it was quite different for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, sort of, basically. I mean, I was very fortunate in terms that I never told my parents, but I have a younger brother who uh, was a doctor. So he had an understanding around sort of HIV. So I had told him, and I thought, that's fine. If I ever get ill, he will be able to tell my parents yeah. and, you know, explain, because they're going to just get all this sort of misinformation and disinformation. And of course, sort of in those days, you know, it was, the stigma was, uh, was terrible. The majority are sort of trapped in that, in that stigma and fear of the 80s. My best friend's father found out I was HIV positive probably about six months after. Mm -hmm. And I thought everybody knew I was very open. And he said, oh my God, Luke's got the AIDS, Luke's got the AIDS. And, and my friend was going, no, he hasn't. But it took a while for him to grasp the fact that it wasn't AIDS. And he said, well, I don't know, I just remember the leaflets and the sure, advert. And sure. that's how I see it now. I think oh, it's, you either remember that or you remember nothing. There does have to be a really sort of, you know, thorough sort of, you know, sex and relationship education yeah. that deals with sort of, you know, HIV, with hepatitis C. Yeah. I doubt that it comes up in, uh, in sort of, uh, in school sex education. It's supposed or, you know, to. I put my hand up halfway through this big long talk about pregnancy and chlamydia and said, oh, what about anal sex? Obviously being openly gay, 15 year old at school. Fantastic. And they said, uh, oh, well, we don't recommend that. <laughs> and I just sit there and just sunk into my hands like, oh my God. Like, it's absolutely sort of, you know, you don't exist yeah. and your behaviour, you know, does not we exist and it's it. not accepted. We yeah. do not recommend it. I mean, yeah. fine, you know, you may not want to do it, but at least talk about it. I find now that 
my generation don't really think about safe sex very often. And it's all because we've been brought up with this sort of mindset that if you are unfortunate enough to get an STI, you just go to the clinic, take a few antibiotics and it's gone. You know, problem solved and people forget that there is incurable things out there. And it seems as though sort of we're not that far on because if you're saying that you know your generation doesn't think about it, I mean our generation didn't think about it because you know we were already doing it. Yeah. You know we weren't having safe sex; we were just going out and, and having sex. Never thought about it. Yeah. So somewhere something has to has to give. It's too much trust um, in the gay community now. I met a people who said to me, oh, "Are you clean?" And then you'll go, yeah. And people will go, yes, I'm, I, I got, I'm fine, I got tested. And they're stating their negative status from a test they did probably 18 months ago. And they're saying, yeah, I'm fine. And it's like, how many people have you been with since then? Yeah. You can't say that anymore. It's, it's yeah. not just the gay community, it's no, no, right no. the way across the board. And, yeah. and, and I think that, you know, my feeling is that it, it does have to be the sort of, you know, 15 to, to 19 year olds, even, even earlier, but of course it gets difficult. Yeah in terms of that. It didn't take me long to, to learn, honestly. I couldn't believe it. I sat down on my laptop just for a few hours and I learned so much and I thought, God, if people learned this years ago, there'd be so much prevention. People would think twice. People would remember that it's here. But, but we didn't and we don't. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's human nature, isn't it? Yeah. So it's sort of, yeah, difficult.